If I take a semiconductor, depending on your carrier density, the refractive index is a function of carrier density. So, what is the consequence of this? So, imagine I have a laser okay, and you are biasing it at a particular point. Let us say I have a laser and this is my L i curve of the laser. Y axis can represent photon density or power or intensity. Okay. Uh, you have the threshold nature. Let us say I am biasing at this point. Okay. We calculated how much is the power at the output for a given input current, a relation which involves I minus I th. But now, let us say I am biasing at this point. Let us say I have I b 1 and an I b 2. You get different power levels. But because of this fact, what else do you expect to happen? Refractive index changes because my current changes, my carrier density changes, my refractive index changes. So, what? What is the first consequence? Where did refractive index appear in any of your analysis? Reflectivity of the mirror, mirror reflectivity was a constant that was not dependent on refractive index. Even before you talk about efficiencies, the something emission wavelength, where did emission wavelength, laser, I am talking about laser. Let us say I have a single frequency laser, what is the meaning of a single frequency laser? Single longitudinal mode. Okay. So, what was the frequency of that single longitudinal mode? You said if I have a mirror which is spaced by a separation d and has a refractive index n, what was the uh, uh, FSR of the system? C by 2 n d, meaning this is allowing certain modes okay and the spacing between the modes is very much a function of refractive index which means if i have a single longitudinal mode laser i would have picked let's say this mode i would have assumed i would have done something so that only that mode is experiencing gain the rest of the modes are experiencing loss okay so now when your n when your current increases carrier density increases, refractive index increases, FSR decreases, which means that these modes will now start appearing at closer spacing. So, they have to move, otherwise why would they appear closer? So, what is the consequence of that? It will, it will, it could still be a single mode, but its center frequency, this is the representing the center frequency, that center frequency has changed. So, as you change the operating point of the laser, center frequency changes. When I operate the laser, let us say forget about modulation, you are just using a semiconductor laser as a CW source, a continuous wave source. When I operate at this current, the frequency is something when I operate at this current, the center frequency is something else, right. You can take it to advantage and say that uh, now I have made a tunable laser. By changing the current, you can slightly tune the frequency of the laser. This is a fundamental phenomena, you cannot do anything about it. Okay. So, as far as the communication system is concerned, why is this a concern? What if the center frequency changed from 193 terahertz to 193.02 terahertz or something? Attenuation change is very, very low. So, attenuation may change, but it is going to be almost flat for this kind of the change. Of course, the center frequency change that we are talking about is of the order of a few gigahertz. Okay. So, when the, the center frequency slightly shifts, Maybe an attenuation is going to change in their 7th order or 8th order of magnitude, but that is not going to affect my system. W how would it affect my communication system? 
demodulation actually photodiodes cannot respond at 193 terahertz. So, whenever you are demodulating an optical system one thing we need to understand is that we are not demodulating at the carrier frequency we are just the photodiode just gets the envelope it does not care about because the photodiode cannot respond at 193 terahertz photodiode response also we will derive what is the bandwidth of the photodiode it will be of the order of gigahertz. So, that is a fundamental difference between you know wireless uh, demodulation and optical demodulation you will never demodulate the uh, I mean you get the envelope at the output of the photo detector. So, there also it does not matter there is no down conversion is what I am saying what you get at the output of the photo detector. So, let us say you have the carrier frequency and you have some envelope this is 193 terahertz you this envelope is let us say at uh, 10 gigahertz you are doing and this is what is being fed to a PD right. The PD photo di photodiode cannot respond to this fast fluctuations it will respond to only this. So, by default it will give you only the envelope it is an envelope detector always. So, whether this center frequency change from 193 to 193.1 receiver side is not caring in direct detection systems we will ask this question in coherent detection systems separately, but generally intensity modulation direct detection system does not care then why should I worry about this change is this change a concern in communication system. It is a concern only in one context uh, we talked when we talked about communication links we said that uh, we use what is called as frequency division multiplexing or wavelength division multiplexing right in the sense that you use what is called as C band of communication which is 1530 to 1550 nanometer uh, sorry it is not 1550 maybe 1560 nanometer. I could be wrong here it could be 1528 to 1562 or something that is decided by the international telecommunication standards and this wavelength range they have divided into 80 channels ok 80 channels of spacing 50 gigahertz each ok. So, the same fiber in the same fiber you can potentially use 80 carrier frequencies up to 80 ok and each of that you can do a modulation such that the bandwidth is confined to 50 gigahertz and all this information can be transported at the same time through the same fiber. So, this is called as in wireless communication this idea is called as frequency division multiplexing uh, in optical communication the same idea is called as wavelength division multiplexing WDM. So, how do you do WDM you take lasers whose center frequencies are now exactly located in the center of your this is your grid. WDM grid and that is defined by ITU. So, that there is no confusion from operator to operator ok. So, everybody who is using WDM has to pick one of these or some of these or all of these 80 channels with this center frequency and modulate their information on that center frequency and transport it through the same fiber different carriers would be using the same fiber for transport. Now, if you start operating at different current levels what will happen you may have intended to transport it through grid 1 or channel 1, but if you choose your I B if you do not think about your I B and choose your I B indiscriminately you may end up operating in either some other channel or you may end up going closer to the grid boundary and how are the grid boundaries defined everywhere there are filters which will pick up specific channels. So, you will lose your information. So, only in that context this refractive index uh, I mean change in center frequency is a problem. So, the consequence so the first consequence emission wavelength is a function of in injection current and we found what is a consequence of that. 
it has no consequence as far as the loss is concerned, it has no consequence as far as the demodulation is concerned for direct detection, but it has a consequence as far as if you are looking at uh, WDM systems. But uh, more uh, important consequence is uh, modulation current will now lead to modulation of phase. You are modulating let us say current between these two values, because communication systems will now uh, always operate when the current is oscillating. So, when the current is oscillating, N m is oscillating or there is a change in N m. So, whenever there is a change in N m what happens? Refractive index changes and when the refractive index changes the phase changes. You wanted to do an intensity modulation, but the system will also give you a phase modulation right. Your intention was to change the current and so to change the intensity, but what really happens is phase modulation. What is the consequence of phase modulation? Why do I care if it is a phase modulation? Because I want only intensity modulation, I am not measuring phase. So, even if there is a phase modulation, why cannot I say oh let it be, let there be a phase modulation, I do not care about it, because I am detecting only intensity. So, what is a what is a problem if I have a phase modulation? So, do you agree that there will be a phase modulation? Yes, refractive index decides the phase optical phase, refractive index modulates means phase modulates. Why should I worry about it in intensity modulated systems? There is a phase introduces a delay and the delay changes with time, but that is at the transmitter. This is all happening at the transmitter. I will not get a narrow band. I will not get a narrow spectral band. Think about it as a uh, you know your traditional uh, phase modulated system. Phase modulates means what is the first derivative of phase? Frequency. If phase changes as a function of time means frequency changes as a function of time, which means the instantaneous frequency keeps changing as fast as the phase, which means whatever I have as a you know it is not nearly monochromatic, it is or it is it is not exactly monochromatic, but you know the q of the cavity divide decides the full width and half maximum and so on. But on top of that you have the frequency changing as a function of time ok. So, ok. So, this sorry this was a problem this is a problem you had to uh, do where you say this is related to the first case to get an idea of what are the what is the order of magnitude. What is the wavelength change when the bias current is changed by 10 milli ampere given refractive index change is 1.81 into 10 power minus 5 percent per milli ampere. The change in refractive index is only this much 10 power minus 5 for every uh, milli ampere. Uh, for a 1550 laser. So, this question is related not to the dynamic phase change, it is related to the static phase change. So, how would the lambda change? So, this is the relation you are going to use. The change in FSR will be the change in lambda. So, if I have a delta n change there what is the corresponding change in delta nu, what is the change corresponding change in delta lambda. Given delta n find delta nu delta lambda, work it out it will come out to be 8 picometer. And to give you a order of magnitude idea of order of magnitude 100 gigahertz is 0.8 nanometer which is 80 picometer. So, 50 gigahertz is roughly 40 picometer. So, the grid is at 40 picometers and your 1 milliamp of current uh, sorry 10 milliamp of current change results in uh, 8 picometer change. So, if you want to move to the grid if you move by 50 milliamps 
you have actually moved into the next grid. So, your bias current changed by 50 milliamps, you move to the next grid. You could use this idea to move the next move to the next grid also. I can set the operating current at a particular value, I will be in one grid. I will move the operating current to the 50 milliamps more, I will be in the next grid. But I cannot keep doing that because the current that I can inject into a small semiconductor laser is limited. Typically, the operating currents are at 50, 50 to 60 milliamps. So, you will not have a large flex flexibility, you cannot get uh, greedy and say that let me move through all the grids by uh, changing the current, that would not be possible. But adjustment within a grid or to maybe a neighboring grid is possible. 